All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Aspiration Inspiration with me, Jason George, where as always we try to aspire to inspire before we expire. And today we are joined by uh, Austin Rose, Austin Griffiths, the leader of the young ones, Anubis <laughs> Kuli, the, the, <laughs> the main chief. You would know him from those movies, from Anubis from, from, from Kuli, you'll know him as Tyrone in, in Four Corners. You'll, you know, I mean, yeah, just by seeing him on screen, you already you know, know who we're talking to, but today we want to chat to, 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 to Austin about, you know, his successes. We want to chat to him about his upbringing and, you know, um, Austin, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, I, I mean, I'm so, so glad that you accepted the invitation. Thank you so much for, for, for joining. Firstly, from my side, good morning and it's great to, to be joining you on this platform here, you know, how everything is changing now, so we have to just go with the times. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so this is only like the second time I'm doing an interview, you know, in this capacity, if I could say, yeah. online. So let's no, see no, how this goes. Uh, yeah, no problem. Um, so, Austin, you know, a lot of people know you from the, the movie, as I said, from Lume Scully. They know you as the young AB, um, Tyrone in Four Corners. You know, you are in dance as Wafik. Um, or, you know, you, you're playing all of these, these amazing roles and you play your character so brilliantly. And, you know, and, and I also know some awards that you were nominated for. And um, talk to us about your your upbringing, your background. Share to us, you know, where you're from, and um, maybe some of the, the the challenges that you may have faced, you know, growing up and achieving your successes. Wow, Jason, you just dove right into it. <laughs> just get right, just get straight into it. <laughs> <laughs> get right into it. Yes. Okay. So, firstly, I would just like to say that. Uh, I'm an artist, but before I'm an artist, I'm a human being. Mm. And in being human, there's no partiality. So when, when I start my story about who I am, who Austin Griffiths is, uh, my story starts as a young lady from Easter River. Oh. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Easter River is a little suburb um, in, in, in Cape Town. Uh, in the northern suburbs and uh, growing up in East River I had a very like I, I wouldn't say a typical colored lighty life but yeah, yeah. I'm gonna just go out in, on, on the ledge and say, on, and say that because I am used to a lot of things that other colored lighties are used to like yeah. you know when I, when, I, when I talk about my upbringing I'm gonna say I didn't grow up with things like PlayStation and uh, TV games and yeah. stuff like that. You know, it was really about using my imagination. Mm. Um, so when I was about three months old, uh, I was I was brought to to a crash here, here in Easter River, and at the time, my my mom and my dad um, were were going through some things and. They, they, it was like an open adoption, so they left yeah. me at the scratch. And this is where, uh, where I still am, where, mm -hmm. well, basically my, my guardians. Yeah. So they adopted me at, at a very young age. Um, but I always knew my parents, I always knew that they were around. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I had some type of relationship with them, but I always knew that this is home, man, you know, and, and yeah. it's kind of difficult for me to, to touch on these points because I haven't really discussed it openly like this before. Mm. Mm. Um, but I've been very blessed. I've been very yeah. blessed in my life. I must, I must tell you because I haven't, I really didn't expect any of, any of this, like my yeah. idea of, of who I wanted to be or what I had in mind for this, for myself, yeah, um, was nothing close to to how things turned out. Yeah. Um, and, and no, no. I mean, I mean, let's yeah. let's chat about that a bit, you know. And I mean, and I mean, it's the first time that I also now hear about about you know you, your background and story like this. And I appreciate you for sharing it with us. And. Talk to us about, about, you know, where you are now and that expectation that you had of, or that you've never, you know, thought about where you are, where you would be one day. What, 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 what did you think you were going to do 
um, what was, how did you, how did, how did you find out that it would be being an artist or being into acting? How did you get to that point? Okay, that's an interesting question. So my mom and my dad both are, are in the police force. Well, my dad retired last year. Mm. But uh, so, so that was my plan. Like when I was in primary school, I wanted to be a cop. So when I when I got to the, about the age of 12, 13 years old, mm. um, going to Sunday school, you know, like like and I'm I'm gonna say this, like we were forced to go to Sunday school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um and then I going to Sunday school I found out that I could also sing like that, that I was mm. blessed with this gift um, of, of singing and the Sunday school teacher like found out, I think at the, na- at the time, her name was Mrs. Christine, my teacher Christine, she found out that, hey, this lady can sing, so she put me like in front of the choir. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I started singing, yeah, and that's where like my, my, my desire to to be heard came from like that's yeah. where that started, and then I totally like put the whole cop thing out of my mind. <laughs> and I was like, hey, "Here's a way for me to 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 be heard." Yeah, because you know, obviously, like I'm not going to say a broken household, but as yeah. a lady coming out of a house where you didn't grow up with his parents, you no, know, there's that constant desire to be heard, you know, yeah. to be understood. So, so that's where that journey started for me. And I mean, a lot of people, I mean, it's incredible that you found that out at such a young age, because talking about that feeling of, you know, growing up in a broken home, um, a lot of people find that sense of belonging, you know, that, that they want to find that and they find it in gangs. They find it, you know, in places where, you know, where it's offered like on a silver platter to them and it's not the best options that are being offered to them. How did you avoid that if, if you were ever faced with it? Well, to be honest, growing up in, in a place like Estreva, there was no avoiding it. Oh. You know, it was it was always there. Um, I was really lucky, if I could say that, to, to always have people protecting me, if mm. I could say. Um, for some reason, like, I don't know, growing up with my brasse even, like, if it's Guy Fox, you know, like, you know, you know, you know, you know, you was you know, 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 you because I, when, when I used to, so I also had that, that phase of uh, like running with the, with the friends and, you know, it's one of men's heart smear and um, I, it, <laughs> I, it was hard, like, I could never, apart from my own friends, I could never go and smear a stranger. Like, I was scared, you know, then we would end up, uh, and, uh, I don't know, it's probably something that was with the crowd that I was running with, but, you know, uh, we were, we were like, there's four months, you know, we're going to go and get all the stuff, you're going to get the paint, you're going to get the eggs, you're going to get... <laughs> We never like went for blades and those things, but you know, like, they had all your swole coats, you know, put on your swole coats over your face. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, that was something that was happening. There was like yeah. going for the blade, you know, and going for the, yeah. the extreme. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, like I'm saying, for some reason, I was always protected from that. Yeah, yeah, nah. And, um, yeah. Now, nah, my friends, my friends, we, I don't think we ever went that far. But uh, like, I think in the end, we would just end up, you know, smearing each other and then going to our houses and getting cleaned up and whatever. So, um, but, but getting back to this, the, 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 the elements in our communities, you know, as, as you say, yes. it's unavoidable and you need those people, you know, that can protect you, that, that see something in you, man. Um, and when, when that, I always appreciate the people that saw something in me. And they, mm. you know, from the, from, from the, you know, the bad crowds and those types of things. Um, so it's always great to have those people and to be lucky to have those people. It's, it's, it's such a, I mean, it's not really luck. It's, it's, I would call it, it's more of a blessing, you know, to have those people. Divine, yes. It's, I, I, I totally agree with you because there were so many times where I was in situations, yeah. especially in the ghetto, because like, someone once told me, if you really want to experience what being blessed is, 
you have to be between the poorest of the poor. Mm. And when I say that, like, you you can really only experience that firsthand. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you 100%. I agree with you 100%. <laughs> um, and, 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 you know, coming from that community and, you know, where, being where you are now um, and, you know, having discovered your talent while being raised in a community like that and now performing on, you know, in, uh, on, on, on various stages and, you know, in various um, well-known movies. What are some of the, what are some of the qualities or as an actor now, um, what are some of the qualities or you know skills that you would need to be uh, an actor or to, to to perform on the level that you are performing at? What kinds of qualities have you developed, and what do you suggest to someone else that maybe also um, are looking from the outside into the industry? Okay, so I think where I'm going to start with that topic is by saying that if you want to be an artist, if you want to be a creative being which I don't think that we choose to be, I think we are born mm. with it, um, is it's really something you have to be unapologetic about. It's, it's something that I, I, I would like to refer to it as the wheel of life. Like we have it within us. Mm. And, and when I speak about that, then I say that it's, it's something that needs to almost be prompted you know, it's, yeah. it's something that needs to be feed, and um, sorry, that needs to be fed. Mm. So, so when you look at it like, like this, like when I I started, there was a, like with any with anyone when they start out with something, there's there's, there's a heavy like yearning for it, when there's a yeah. desire, you want mm. it. Now that thing must stay alive, that desire within you. Like it can't just be there in the beginning. You have to literally like hold on to it and yeah. carry it with you wherever you go. Because it does get tougher. A lot of people and, and even myself coming into my industry, all I saw was glitz and glamour. Yeah. You know, all I saw was the lights, the cameras, the red carpets. And two, three years down the line after, you know, starting to do this professionally. I started seeing the loopholes. Yeah. I started seeing the, you know, what's really going on behind the scenes. And, and that kind of scared me, you know. Yeah. And I just want to make people aware of that. I want to make um, fellow artists aware of that. That, yes, there, there is that side of our industry, the glamorous side. Yeah. But at times like this, you know, when, like now, every industry is affected. Mm. So you really see that. There's no different career that you are pursuing currently. I must be honest, like I can't take ownership for it. Mm. I it's it's really something that I've always struggled to understand. Mm. I, I can't say that I understand it yet, because to understand it is to to know what your sound is and to know what you are capable of entirely. Yeah. And I can't say that I know that yet. Yeah, no. Definitely. <laughs> but but what, what I do know is that it's magical. Like, it's really, it's, it's something powerful. Mm. Being in the arts is no joke. Like, I, I look at it like this, being an actor, being an artist, you, you have an opportunity to change people's minds. You have an yeah. opportunity to, to actually like crawl into people's hearts and, and address real matters you know so yeah i've been taking advantage of it you know recently mm. um, and it took me a long time to kind of figure it out but yeah. i would say being an artist and and this is something i learned from someone someone once said to me that the job of an artist is to find the way and if the artist cannot find the way the way cannot be found you know, and, and when you think of it like that, it's very really profound mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very because it's really, it's, it's about being authentic. You know, you can't say that you're an artist, but you want to be like someone else. You yeah. want to sing like someone else or act like someone else. Even It's something that comes from, from, from your heart. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 
And, and that makes so much sense. Um, and it's, uh, it's actually the first time I think about it that way because the way I look at actors, it's almost like, you know, if I look at, if I look at Austin and I'm like, Austin, you know, acts just as well as, you know, this other person, but it's more of like, a, yeah. Austin is actually an artist and he's creating, you know, a role that, you know, that he has, or, or, or you are so consumed by that role that you're supposed to play and you're playing it in a way that only Austin can play it and not like someone else could or should play it, um, you know, and... You've got it, you've got it, Jason. This is actually <laughs> so profound because I've never thought about it in that way because I look at someone and I'm like, oh yeah, but he's just like this person. But then, you know, as an artist, as you say, it cannot be that because then, I mean, it removes all artists, you know, arts in it from it, <laughs> if I can call it. Yeah. Um, that is actually so powerful. And, you know, talking about that thing of um, you, you, you can change people's minds and you, and you creep into the hearts of people. Um, I've watched, you know, some of your, some of your scenes and that you, that you, that you shot in Numescoli, for example, you know, there, there's the, there's the, there's the, the, the rape scene. Um, there's in, in, in dance, you play the, 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 the disabled Wafiq. Um, yes. And all of these roles, you know, how do you get into character for those roles? How do you, um, you know, is it just the writing of the script? What do you do to prepare your mind? You know, I'm going to play this scene. I'm going to shoot this scene now. Um, I'm going to play this character. How do you get into that? Okay, so I think it starts with the people I was surrounded by. It really does. Like, I can't tell you the, the amount of, talent the amount of wisdom yeah. that that i was surrounded by like numerous Kuli was was okay four corners was great this was yeah. my first like um in basically into the film industry and and at the time i was working with, with jody abrams and he kind of gave me a bit of coaching as mm. to what the film industry is about and what an actor oh the role an actor plays, you know, yeah. in, in all of this. So then I took it, I took it for myself because then I started doing research by myself and I, I started uh, like going into different methods of acting. Yeah. Um, and, and that's when Numa Scully came and, and it gave me an opportunity to showcase that. So I see myself as a method actor. Um, a lot of actors out there who, who, who would see this are probably going to think, I don't know what's this, but I'm saying that's dangerous. That's what, I mean, I'm not an actor, but that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, <laughs> what, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> so for, for me, method acting is like, if, if I'm doing a scene like where I'm, where I'm walking in the snow, mm. but I've been like outside for three days and it's ice cold. Like, I can't act cold, man. You know, I must experience it. Like, okay. it will cook great. Like, yeah. I, I'm going to sit in the, in the freezer. Yeah. <laughs> before we start filming. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sit in the freezer before yeah. we start filming. When they say action, I'm going to get out of the freezer and go there. Right now, we're like, uh. <laughs> Because it's, it's, it's very real, man. For me, yeah. it's something where I use my emotions for the character. Mm. Because with, without us, without the actor bringing the character to life, it's just words on a page. Yeah. So it leaves so much room for us to do whatever <clears throat> we want. Mm. But so coming back to that, um, method acting. Yeah. yeah. With numerous fully, um and you mentioned the, the, the scene where A.B. was sodomized. Mm. It was actually, that was the first scene that I filmed for the movie. Oh. I yeah, like that was my sister, that upset guy. I think actually in the book, in the book, he, he mentions it um, when he talks about, uh, I've, I've, yeah, I've read his uh, book. I have it with me, by the way. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, I, yeah, I'm reading it for the second time, actually, because uh, I, he, he <laughs> Uh, Mr. Fredericks and I shared the stage at, at my former school and, um, mm. and then I also met him at law school and he signed the book for me because by that time I, then I bought the book and he signed it for me and you know I read through the book and this is now after I've watched the movie and then I saw in the book actually at the end when he talks about the movie that 
the first scene was actually on the dumpster in, you know, in, in Usenberg. And then I thought, well, oh, you know, how does it, like, and that scene only comes later, you know, and it looks like it's, it should, or, and I mean, that's the interesting thing for me about movies and how it's shot. Um, you know, I was saying that it's the first scene and, you know, but it's, uh, it's uh, that you shot, but it's actually a bit later in the movie. And, it, and that's just an interesting point from, from my side, but um, again, yeah, sorry for interrupting you. You were going to say that's No, the, no, no problem. <laughs> like, but I yeah, was, I just got I excited now. now. Yeah. Like Uncle John, I have to mention this. Um, wow, what a great man. Yeah. I so love forever. Yeah. That, that man really was a part of changing my life mm. for the better. Um, I met him the day before I filmed that scene. Mm. But I didn't know that that was not the first time I had met him. I had met him four years ago, four years before it, I was casted to play him in his film. I met him. Mm. He was doing a documentary here in Estreva, and I was lumming with Brasov. Mm. Like, you know, the usual, they yeah, were, yeah. we were changing, playing dominoes, and he came in there and he had a, like a camera crew with him and he was doing a documentary. But we didn't even look at one another, man. Like, it uh. wasn't... But the day I met him and I saw his face and I, I said, Uncle, do you remember me? <laughs> we met four years ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> how is this possible? <laughs> uh, uh. And, then, and then we actually sat down and what it was one of the most surreal things I had experienced with another mm -hmm. human being. He told me what had happened. Like, oh. he told me the story. I asked for him to, I, I, asked, I asked him, like, this is how I want to do it. I really want to do justice to it. So please explain to me what happened, like, yeah. that day. Oh, it's really, you know, when someone's speaking and you just want to keep quiet, like, yeah, yeah, you just want to listen because, and really to get an idea of, of what he was feeling. I really had to let go of myself. Yeah. I really had to forget about who Austin Griffiths is in some sense and mm. and literally be every colored light. Like I couldn't be myself. Yeah. I had to be every other colored light who was my age who had ever experienced this and who yeah. ever experienced it. So it was an opportunity for me to really get into his shoes. And, and, and that's what's so great about being an actor, you know? Yeah. You don't, I can actually be seven different people in one lifestyle, like in one lifetime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that to yeah. me is amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, the, talk, talk to us a bit about the, the, the role in, in, in the Cagnet series dance um, and, you know, Wafik's role and what you, what you, you know, take from that role. I mean, being a, uh, uh, playing a disabled character, you know, what does that do for you, and you know, what does that do for you as an actor and as a person personally? Okay, so let's see how honest we're gonna get right now. <laughs> we're gonna go all the way. So, dance for me was was a. I was I was going through a very challenging time in my life. Mm. Um, and and just just a quick. Uh, I'm just going to go back to my school really quickly. When I, when I was filming, yep. something very traumatic had happened in my life. I lost my grandparents. I mean, I was very, very close with them. But what was so significant to me was that the day after Abby was sodomized and, and you know, there's a scene where he's sitting alone crying, mm. that was the morning my grandfather passed away. Oh. And, and it was like, it was almost divinely aligned for yeah. me to feel what I felt that morning so that I could do justice to the scene. Mm. So coming back to dance, it's the same with what we like. I was I was offered that role and when they offered me the role, they, they like they asked me, look, do you want to yeah. do this? This is not simple. Hey. <laughs> and and they asked me like do, do I need because look the character's right leg was inverted. Yeah. So they asked me, do, do I want them to like put something on my leg for, for it to stay like that? Or, and I, I refused. I said, no, I want to do this myself. And I, no. I, I had to do that for 11 weeks. Eh? See, um, like, that's incredible. Every morning when I, when I get to sit 
that is my pain in word, bro. Uh. <laughs> yes. And it, it wasn't it wasn't about um trying to make it happen or trying yeah. to, to to make it work. Like it was really I put myself in in, in that shoes. Yeah. It, it never I never felt like I was ever because it could come across that some people would think like you're making fun of it or a guy of them, yeah. It was never that. It was yeah. something very sensitive and, and I think on set people understand it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But getting into character for Wafik for me was I think there was a lot of myself in that character, you know. Um and when I say that, I, I'm gonna say that I, I grew up like being an introvert man like I uh-huh. it's a little um I had to pray. <laughs> I actually it is calm, bro. <laughs> oh please. <laughs> No, it's <laughs> <laughs> nah. nah. uh, calm and this is prepared. That yeah. is calm. Like so with Bafik, um it was an opportunity for me to get back into that shell. You know, yeah. To to on myself to for train here, basically. Mm. Because I needed to understand like you you like I can't come with the mindset, I can't go to say to the mindset of a celebrity, but mm. play a broken character, you know. I yes. really had to bring myself down to that level. And sorry, not down to that level. Yeah. I had to be equal. No, okay, yeah. yeah. Let me rather use that word. Mm. Um but it no. was it was an amazing like journey because with the help of the writers, you know, the people who wrote the script, and with the help of the directors, yeah, I, 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 I could, and I didn't, I don't think that I pulled it off to the extent where, where I would say it was one of my best. No, like it was really mm. something. It was a learning curve for me because it was the first time I had to do something so challenging. Mm. Um, so to answer that, like it was the most challenging role I had played so far. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, to, thanks. Because I didn't only physically change my body; I mentally had to. Yeah, adapt. that is that is actually so powerful. Thanks, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing that. And you know, I mean, we look at you guys on screen, and we like, we don't see the challenge. We don't see, you know, the real people behind, you know, on set. Because I mean, and I think we lose that sense of this thing was probably also recorded three or four times before it, you know, it was made to perfection. And you know the struggle that the actor actually has to go through, and you know balancing that art, being an artist and being a person, and having to get into the role of another person. And it looks naturally when I mean when I look at when I look at your scenes and your roles that you play, it looks so naturally. It's like you know if I'm gonna speak to you, I'm gonna speak to you as A B and A B had to mail slot and A B had to mail. You know, it's almost like I'm gonna talk to that person, <laughs> and it's like I'm talking to A B, the leader of the young ones. You know, was the picture sign in all good <laughs> guys i tell you no i can't explain that to the light is like when i go to the just thing so can you write the light is explain it yeah. the light is a v yeah no i mean like uh, it's incredible and it's that thing that you say of you know really getting into character and you know being able to creep under people's you know into their hearts and into their minds and you know when we look at that scene we after you walk away from the dumpster and we feel that sadness with you we feel that pain with you the next day we feel the anger when you want to go and you know stab Uncle Bali we feel we feel all of that emotion and it's you know because of how perfectly you played and I mean shout out from Mr. Mr. Fredericks also in the book um, and you know I, I was actually so so um, saddened when I got the news that he had passed on it was it was so sad mm. it's a very surreal moment for me also because I met this person yeah. I've engaged with this person and until you know and I'm the, you know I've spoken to them um, but in, and I mean and he commented on your role also saying it's it's a brilliant role and how you played it and I mean from the outside looking in uh, it's, I mean, you being humble about it and being, you know, being the real person, but that's really amazing. Um, and, 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 and yeah, and I'm sure you've heard it multiple times before. And I mean, you were even, uh, talk to us about, I know you were, you were nominated for Best Promising Actor because of, I think, Numa Um Yes, the African Movie Academy Awards. 
yeah, yeah. What does that do for you as an actor? You know, as your, as your, did that reaffirm something for you? Is it something you've always worked towards? Or what did, what did that, what did that mean for you? I'm gonna be honest with you, like, I get this gedink on nominations <laughs> of awards. Like, that didn't cross my mind. Yeah. It was, for me, it was really like a chance for me to find out who I am. Mm. Like, cause I get this gewit, I can I do it. Like, you, you have to be a blank canvas, basically. Yeah. To, to to see what picture develops on there. Mm. So with 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 the Amas, like I was sitting in my room one night, like a couple of months after the film release. Yeah. And I was going through my emails and I saw this mail, like I was nominated for the African Movie Academy Awards. But I'm uh-huh. reading it, but I can't it's obviously kind of crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, this is this is like, <laughs> uh, and I was even like invited to Nigeria to Lagos to come and join the, like the award ceremony and everything. Yeah. It was well, I didn't go because it was the, I only found out four days before the the ceremony, and uh, there was enough time to get a, a temporary passport and all of that. Yeah, yeah. But but what I can say is. It definitely made me feel like there was someone watching. Mm. Like, you know, the, yes, the, the film is for the audience. Yeah. And, and, but as an actor, you really you want to know that you've been... Like, I'm sure for any actor, mm. that, that whatever you've done made an impact, man. You really... Yeah. Do, you want to know that, and it not necessarily like through an award or a nomination. Yeah. But... You know, so so that was really I, I could see like yeah, I didn't expect that. Yeah. But it was a wonderful experience because yeah. I mean, I always I because I don't see it from from the aspect or from the perspective of an actor. Yeah. Remember, I see it like a lighting of Mister of I see it was like yo, but what did he come here? Come on, yeah. I, I like <laughs> always bring it back to that. Um, and, you know, again, when I look at it, it's almost like, as you say, you know, you, when you were that Sunday school light and, you know, you realize, you, you discover that you now can sing and you want people to hear you and you want people to, you know, you want to, you know, vocalize and, you know, be out there and you want people to see you for who you are and stuff and have that voice and getting that award, you know, I mean, it, it just like reaffirms, you know, that's the, that's the, that there are actually people watching and that you are being heard and mm. it brings it down so many levels for me now because it feels like I'm in touch with Austin as the person as opposed to you know AB because I, that's yeah. how people look at you that's how I looked at you most certainly and you know hearing this experience and these experiences that you're sharing really incredible and being that Easter of a lighty um, I want to ask this question and there's also questions that have been asked to me um, You've worked with a whole bunch of, as you said, talented people in South Africa, in the South African, you know, um, in the South African industry and, and, and a lot of artists, you know, well-known artists on our TV screens. I'm sure there are people that you've worked with that you also look up to. Um, there's the movie Bloodshot. I don't know if you actually, you know, acted with Vin Diesel. Um, yeah, I saw him, like, I walked past him. Yeah, <laughs> like serious. Yeah, all of those things. How do you, just in your mind, what, what goes through your mind? Be like, yeah, I'm going to be working with Van Diesel or yeah, I'm working with Ishad Ali now or, you know, I'm working with uh, Christian Bennett or someone like that. You know, if, if there's that sense of you look up to them and now you're working with someone that you look up to, like I look up to you, you know, as, a, as an artist and as, a, as, 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 as I watch on the screen. And, you know, now I'm speaking to you and it's weird <laughs> in a way, <laughs> even though we can relate to each other in some way, but, you know, you are yes. a public figure and it's someone that I look up to, you know, it's Iman Famous. And, you know, now you work with that person. What, what do you do to kind of like keep you cool in that moment or <laughs> also elevate yourself to like, I'm also, you know, in the room with you guys. Yes. I'm also a professional. How do you handle that situation? I'm going to be honest with you and, and, and say like, 
you, it's you never ready for it. <laughs> like no one is ever ready for it. Yeah. Like you can do the preparations and but when you <laughs> sit down between these people, <laughs> yeah. and then that's where the concept of being a light of Easter River comes in once again. Like mm. I, I, I really just think of it as. Because yes, I get excited like in my mind and in my mind I, I'm running around and like woo! But, but in the moment, like I'm sitting still and I just take it in. Like mm. I just allow myself to feel this moment because yeah. it happened much quicker than I thought it would. Yeah. Because like if I if you go back a couple of years now, I was I was like 10 years old, no, I'm lying, like 12 years old, and I made a list. Mm. A list of names of people in, in in the industry, like in the arts way, of people I wanted to meet. Mm. Like quite means I take out to the TV like Wayne McKay, exactly. you know, Adam, uh, all those people. Yeah. And and I made this list and funny enough, the people at the bottom of the list were the people I got to meet first. The people I yeah. thought I wouldn't meet. Uh. You know, that was for my bio weird for this. Yeah, that is <laughs> that is so powerful. And, and I got, I got to meet them first and even like working on, I don't know if you know, like I played in, in the series called Of Kings and Prophets. Mm-hmm. I, read, I read some, I haven't watched it yet. I, I read some. An, an American TV series and mm-hmm. um, I met some Hollywood A-listers, like some Hollywood mm-hmm. actors. And I was like, I can't explain to you. <laughs> 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 like you sitting there and then like, Ray Winston is sitting right next to you. Mm, mm. You know, this bra from CIA. <laughs> you know, and then I'm like, thinking. but then, uh, and on the other end, when you hear them speak and, and, and you, you hear the things that they that they talk about, then you realize how like similar we are. Yeah. Like, I drink water. I got toilet, you know. <laughs> Oh, that's definitely a way to make it more human, uh, to bring it, to bring it more, uh, uh, you know, we're more in touch as, as people. Um, but yeah, and then, and then share with us the, and I think we're running out of time. Uh, I mean, you also probably have your own commitments and share with us your, your challenges and, you know, if you faced any criticism and how you dealt with that, how did you overcome that? <laughs> Okay, so um, I think one of one of my my biggest challenges being in this industry so far has been keeping my head like um kopto. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people say that to you, but it goes in by the one year out by the other year. You know. Yeah. It's it's really something I had to experience first then. and uh, one of my one of my mentors, Terry Fortune. You know, he, he taught me something and it was, and I would like for whoever's listening to this, you know, if they aspire to be an artist, um, take this with you, please. It's that do not be fooled by your own publicity. It's a very, very important um, um, statement because it's really, after like Mume Skori came out and these things started happening. Yeah. My life changed in an instant like i'm I'm not even kidding yeah and and not necessarily financially because and and that's a conversation on its own yeah, yeah. but but in the in the sense that i was now known like people started you know i'm looking for ab really, yeah yes but that for me was also I, I needed to separate the two. I needed to separate A B from Austin. Mm. Because understand imagine that imagine men just greet your A B with three yeah. They got after that of the glue. So it's A B So you know, so it's really and and you give that to the audience. They are yeah. entitled to that. Mm. But at the same time, it's really about that was I think that's one of my biggest challenges. Yeah. Um and I'm honest about it. Like, mm. stick next to Yeah, I mean, I mean, and we we're young people, and we need that, you know, that shot of of confidence. And if we, you know, if we've done something great, I think we should own it. Um, you know, as an asakum khurat but you know, if you've done that's what is a very fine line. Yeah, yeah. Like to own is one thing, but mm. 
to be then there's being overconfident as well mm. and, and and that's where competitiveness comes in and all of those things mm. and i think it's a problem that we have uh, in yeah. Cape town i don't know if it happens around the world but um it really is like overconfidence causes comp- competitiveness like yeah. that's what i wanted to say yeah because yeah. it's not necessary for us to 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 have anything any agenda as artists against one another because yeah. everyone has yeah. a place under the sun yeah you know it's it's not something we have to fight for it's mm. something that is given to us and we must just embrace it yeah and that that uh, at least to you know people breaking one another down and start making weird stuff and you know and it happens it happens yeah. every day like I can't yeah. stress it enough. Mense, ons het genoeg. Jylle hoef nie te pak van mekaar nie. Ja. Ja. En, en, as that thing, as you say, like, for three years, mense is getting you a bit out of it. I mean, I had, I had a very funny experience, actually, in that regard. I met, um, I met Nico Panaggio. Nico is the, you know, the survivor dude, the, but he used to yes. be, yes, yes. the Yakis, in Siamandala. Um, so, so I, I meet him in Cavendish in Claremont. So I'm like, are you Joe's Kiriakis? And then he's like, no, <laughs> I'm the Nico Fanagio who plays the George Kiriakis <laughs> on the line. And I was so embarrassed and I'm like, um, yeah, sorry, sorry, Nico, I, but do you mind taking a picture? <laughs> and so I still got my picture, but it's as you like, you, people are, you're so into character and you know this person as, as you know, as this character. And, um, and as you say, you you shut up after that, and you know, I know you as AB. Um, and then afterwards, I got to know, oh, this is this guy's name is Austin, and you know, and then I started the platform, and then I'm like, you know, I think you have an, an excellent story, and you're a young person, you know, you uh, you face this, you face similar challenges that we that that many of us do on the Cape Flats, and you are successful, and that goes against the grain of what you'd expect from someone coming from the Cape Flats. Um, Jason, excuse me, may I add, when you you refer to success, Mm. um, I do not want people to get the idea, like from my side, that success is is measured in a monetary sense, you know, it it, it really isn't, success is is seeing people's lives change Mm. because of my stories, success to me is is hearing people say the words that I said in that movie. Success mm. to me is seeing people sing along when I'm on stage. Mm. Like it really is. It's it's, and and I try to see it like that. Yeah. My wealth is is within you know, mm. and and it's something I I get to express with people on a daily basis. Yeah, that's very powerful, and I mean I agree 100%. And to me, it's a, it's a matter of being being comfortable with yourself being happy with what you've achieved being you know at a stage where and talking about that thing of the film pan ana mense te fatty and the film you know ana mense after karaki um you know, getting to a stage where you are content with what you've achieved or what you know with, with what you have it doesn't have to be financial um but knowing that you are making a change in the lives of other people um and i think that's very very important uh, and thanks for sharing that um now that we move from the criticism, successes, what's your highlight, you know, main highlight in your career thus far? Wow. There's one that you can pick. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to, I think it's definitely Bloodshot. Mm. Like, <laughs> I, have a, <laughs> okay. I have a small role in there, but it it was definitely like being on 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 Sony's books. Yeah. Like that he was like whew, woo I've made it in life. That really to me was like okay, I could see like it's starting to pay off. Yeah. Because sometimes as you go along, you start losing hope, man. Like, it's like, when is it going to happen, God? You know, like, <laughs> and then things like that come along and you, you just, you have to silence yourself. You know, there's that mm. thing about, you know, 
be still and know that I'm God. Yeah. You really, there's, there's moments in your life where you just have to center yourself mm. and just, just realize that like how magnificent, you know, the manifestation of your dreams are. Yeah. And, and, and that's why, that's why the, um, Bloodshot was a, a highlight for me. Not yes. because I met Lynn Diesel, not yeah. because nothing other, it was really just looking at the magnitude yes. of, of that um, moment. Yeah. Um, Two and, more and questions. With, yeah. Okay, yes, yes, please go ahead. You were going to say, you can go, you can go ahead. <laughs> okay. With, with big opportunities like that, uh, yeah. so just whoever's watching, if this artist's watching, there are always great challenges that come along with it. Like it can't be makkelijk, we see. Like the day before I shot a blood shot with Vin Diesel, the where I was sleeping, like the house I was staying in was broken into the night yeah. before. Mm. Like alles gesteel dan. I done a show the evening before. I had money and everything mm. with me. So these guys that broke into the house like came to my bedside. They took my money. They took my phone. They took my no. like, everything. Yeah. And 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 I and then I had to go to sit. Mm. Like I had to go to sit after that and not think about just being robbed like of yeah. sure. it's it's like that's where that where it comes in. Like don't let these things get you down. Mm. Tell your story, go out there, be amazing, shine like the sing or sing it to my Yeah, uh, uh what your, your future plans are for, you know, moving forward, um, you know, post COVID um, and, you know, in your acting career or in your career as an artist. Okay. I'm going to answer that question as a human being. I'm going to say that things look very, very, you know, like vague, almost if I could say obscure, if you use the word obscure. Um, so right now, uh, I'm, I'm putting my trust in God, mm. the almighty. Um, and when I say that, uh, I, I really mean like focusing on, on what his plan is for my life. Yeah. Because a, a lot of, a, a lot of times I think we try to take things into our own hands yeah. and, and we want to decide where we're going next or what's going to, you know, what's going to happen after this. But this has been an opportunity for me to, to really like try and see what I can do to, to, to be honest with people. Mm. And, and that's where my music comes in. Uh, for the first time in my life, I have started sharing my original music with people. Mm. And uh, I've been writing like for the past three years. So uh, it has allowed me to, to almost un understand my people, if I could say. Yeah. And when I say my people, I refer to the ghettos. I refer mm. to colored people. And, and, and when I say that, I'm not saying that other races aren't my people. Yeah. No, I'm saying that I, as, as with other um, people, they, they need to start speaking up now, you know, mm -hmm. it's that time. We need to start uh, almost declaring that, that we have a rich history as colored people, as mm -hmm. well as with any other race, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and I've, I've started doing research on that. And, and that's where my music, um, I think, is going to make it clear for people because I've been focusing on an on, on a EP, so so pretty soon god willing in this year i will i will re be releasing music I'll um, be good with, yeah <laughs> yes and and this this music is going to give you an idea of of where i am at now as an artist mm. because i i would like to, to call it struggle music mm. uh, when i say that it's my music is very conscious um it, you know, it, 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 it speaks about everyday life. It, it speaks about the pain that, that, uh, that our communities go through. It speaks about people dying every day, you know. It, it speaks about really getting an idea that for the first time, 
like, I mean, I'm going to say this, going to church doesn't matter. Like, it's not about wie gaat jake so nach keek toe, of wie gaat jake vredag na siek toe. It's really about being human for the first time ever. So, and, and I'm using that in my artistry. I'm, I'm, I'm showing my, my human side to people. Because look, in these times we live in, people don't care about celebrities, I can tell you that. People don't care about the glitz and the glamour. People are worried about their safety. People yeah. are worried about the, the, the immense changes that are going on in the world. Mm -hmm. So I would rather speak to people from, from a pure place and educate people, um, not specifically on what the media is, is portraying or what the media is showing us, but the humanly, like the human aspect of yeah. things. Yeah. That, that, and, and how to say it best is, what is dan gewoord van jou kind is my mm. Ek doch is love your neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. That, sound, that actually sounds some, some, like some good lyrics to go into a song also. Uh, I have I have a song with those lyrics. That's what, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, that's the type of music I'm mm. writing now. Yeah. Um, we have to remember, yes, yes, we are being told that we cannot hold one another's hands and that we cannot have these gatherings and all of that. But it, it all comes down to, like, loving one another. Mm. Being, and, and, and intimacy does not come from physicality. Mm. You know, intimacy is not measured by, by how close I am to someone physically. No. Mm. It, it is measured by how equal, like how, how equal we are, if I could say. Because each of us are different, but all of us are equal. Mm. And, and in saying that, we have to really put our differences aside this time. Yeah. Like, the state the world is in. We don't need boo, man. Like, I'm mm. going to say that. Mm. We don't need stories anymore. There's way too much lies being spread. There's way, way too much. Yeah. You know, there's a song that explains it beautifully. There's a fire on the mountaintop and nobody seems to be on the run. Mm. You know, there's, 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 there are enough fires burning, you know. We don't need to add fuel to, to these fires. It's really, we, we just need to focus on being honest. Yeah. And that's what I'm doing in my music going forward now. So. Yeah. That is really powerful thing. And, and I mean, I, I look forward to listening to, you know, uh, we, we always get caught up in the beats of certain songs and, uh, you know, the, the, the sound and all of that. But I really look forward to the lyrics as well and listening to the message. And I think it's just from listening to what you're saying now, it's, you know, an incredibly powerful message um, to put out there. And, and as you say, people are looking for hope now and people are looking for positivity. Um, and, you know, that's also part of the reason why I undertook this project. Um, to, to give people that sense of hope, you know, that there's still a sense of positivity, there's still a sense of um, humanity, you know, um, and, and, that's, and that's what it's about. Uh, and at the same time, making a difference in other people's lives, people that are, you know, the people that, are, that might be down and out at the moment, people that are looking for um, not necessarily motivation, but for a way to make them feel like, you know, my dreams are valid, my, my future goals are valid, you know, there is hope. There is, you know, there is a possibility of me achieving what I want to achieve or what I hope to achieve. Um, and with the doom and gloom that's going on in the world, that may have been dampened a bit, you know, because now it's like you don't know what the future holds. But again, it's as you say, it's not about us knowing what the future holds, but just know who holds the future and depending on God and trusting in Him for, you know, for for that. It is um, beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> and, and last question, Austin. Um, Thank you so much for your time, by the way. I really appreciate it. And I know, you know, you, with your show is coming up tonight and you probably also want to focus on that. And, um, uh, it's pretty, we can't promote it in here also because this is going <laughs> to come a bit late. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, look forward to tuning in. Um, Thanks, man. Anyone that wants to follow in your footsteps, you know, advice for that person, you know, and general advice for, for a young person that's, you know, listening to this at the moment, that looks up to you, um, that wants to be an artist, that wants to be an actor like you. And I know we talked, we spoke about not being an artist like someone else, but I mean, we look at this person and seeing a role model, at least, as someone that has achieved it. And I can pursue it because Austin has done it. Um, what advice do you have for someone that comes after you? Um, 
and you know what tips do you have maybe for them um in the way forward so maybe if you can just share share that with us okay um what i what i am going to say is that um and just referring to what you what you said earlier on if 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 there are people who who feel like they want to follow in my footsteps um this, uh, it makes me think of something very profound and it, it speaks about this in, in the Bible where it says that um, James and and James and John they ask they ask Jesus like if if he can do one thing for them and he said yes you know you'll do it and and they asked him if they can have if the one of them can sit on his right side and the other on his left and Jesus said, the only way how that can happen is if you drink from the same cup that I drank from and are baptized with the same baptism I was baptized with. And, and now to put it in real terms, it means that it's to, to, to say that you want to follow in someone's footsteps, you have to sacrifice what they sacrifice. Mm. Um, and and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that that is necessarily the way to go. Yeah. So, please know that um, for aspiring artists, aspiring actors out there, if this is what you want to do, if, if this is what your heart burns for, don't chase after it. It will come to you. Mm. Stay, stay focused on, on, on keeping your message pure. Stay yeah. focused on, on the value that you add to people's lives and not how much you want to change it. Mm. Because um, being an actor and, and, and coming onto television and, and being on radio and all these platforms, it's, it's not everyone gets to be on these platforms. And we need to make that clear. Like, so when you do get there and you are on these platforms, please, please do not be self-centered. And I, I, I say this in such a manner that um, it really, uh, this is how I see it. When I speak or when I act, when I sing or whatever, mm. I don't see me. I see every colored lighty who is me, who is like me. Every lighty my age around the world, that's what I think of. And when I say lighty, I mean like a girl, boy, the youth. So, so always keep that in the back of your mind that what you're doing is not is not only for you. Yeah. Your 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 goals is not only for you. You are going to reach those those goals, and you will you will see your dreams manifesting. But it is for everyone who will come after you. Mm. Mm. Like it really, it, because it's not about the final destination. It's about the journey. Yeah. So allow yourself to experience the journey. Be, be inviting for for critique and for for um any any type of information. But be careful. Be careful because there are people out there who lead us astray. There are yeah. people who, who who tell us things to lead us further away from where we want to go. Yeah. So just be cautious of that. But at the same time, stay true to yourself. Always remember why you wanted to do it. Because people are going to come along and say, this is why you should do it. This is why you should do it. <laughs> remember why you wanted to do it. Yeah. I think that is very powerful. Thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, even it, even to me, you know, it's, 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 it's so relatable in that um, you, you always get caught up into what other people think might be best for you. Um, and you mm. think yourself. You start losing yourself into wanting to be what the people say you should be and not being the person that you intended for yourself to be anymore. Dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's a very, very powerful message that you should um, with, with our young people. And I mean, talking to the young people now that are watching this, if you're watching and you've been inspired by what has been said and what we've spoken about, you know, um, and Austin's journey thus far, and, you know, let us know what you think. Reach out to us. Um, and share with other people, you know, you never know who might need this message. And, you know, at Aspiration Inspiration, it's always about aspiring to inspire before we expire. And Austin, is there anything else that you want to share with us before we drop off? 
people, <laughs> all I'm gonna say, keep the love alive. Yeah. Keep the love alive. Don't try, just do it because we don't have to try anything. Yeah. If you make coffee, you don't try to make coffee, you make the coffee. Just do it. So if so if you go sing, if you go act, whatever you're gonna do, if you're reading, just do it, man. You can do it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much.